let's look at the MyQ area to start responding to some requests. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this first request here in my queue. Now that I'm inside of the request, I have a number of different options here that I can use to start updating this request. First of all, across the top, I'm displayed all of the customer information. And this area provides me with basic information like the customer's name, email address, if I have a phone number for them, that will be shown here, and also how they contacted us originally. I can also switch over to the History Search tab and pull up other requests that this individual may have opened. By default, this is going to perform a general search based on all of the customer information that I currently have. However, I can also choose from this dropdown other types of searches such as a full name match or even a email domain match. So in this case, it would be looking for any requests that have come from somebody at example.net. Now, when you have searched the request history, you can take a look at individual requests in their history simply by clicking them and you'll be shown the peak view. And you can also click on the request ID itself and you're given the option to either copy the customer information over or even merge the requests together. Over on the right hand side, we have the request meta information area. And this is gonna show a number of different items about the request itself. First of all, I have displayed the request ID itself. This is the request ID that HelpSpot assigns to the request. Below that, we have the status listed. And the status allows us to set what the current state of the request is. In this case, my status is currently active, but after performing an action, I might mark a request as problem solved or maybe even something like escalated or waiting for reply. These status objects are configurable by your HelpSpot administrator, so you may see a different set of statuses uh, than what I'm showing here. Directly below that, I have the request category. Now, this is the overarching way that requests are organized inside of HelpSpot and allows me to set a general area that this request belongs in. So for example, this request might be a general sales question or it might be a general support question. Finally, HelpSpot is going to show me who the request is currently assigned to and then any custom fields or request tags that I have for this request. That brings us over to the main note area this is where you can write replies to customers and also make notes on a request. The re request note area functions just like a standard email editor that you may have used before. So I can start typing. And also adding formatting. I can also do things like inserting links. And I can also do more complex formatting, like adding bulleted lists and changing font colors, highlights, and font sizes. Now, once I have composed my note, I have three options for how this note is going to be sent. First off, I have a public option. And what HelpSpot tells me right away is that the customer is going to be emailed in this case. So what this means is that this note that I'm writing right now is going to be sent to the email address of the customer. It will also be available to the customer in the public portal that the customer has access to. Now I also have the option to make a private note instead. Now a private note is going to be visible to staff only and not to customers. I can optionally choose to notify specific staff members about this private note, or for example, if you're just talking with this customer on the phone and you wanna make some notes, you can choose to just create a private note and have it attached to the request. Finally, I have the option to create a external note. Now an external note is going to be a note that's sent to an outside party but that the customer will not be sent. 
So a great example of when you might want to use this is if you have an outside vendor that you're working with on a problem, you might want to send them an email to troubleshoot the problem, but you might not want that interaction to be visible to the customer. In this case, if we were to add an email address here, that email address would now be sent this message, but the customer would not be sent the message. Any replies that the vendor then makes back to us are going to automatically be added to the request history as private notes. This way you can see that complete interaction with the vendor, but your customer will not. Once you've chosen the type of update that you want to perform, you can commit the update by choosing either to update the request or to update and close the request. Now there is a difference between these two actions. Updating the request will send out the emails and perform any updates that you have uh, selected for this particular update, but it will not close the request. The request will remain in your My Queue area. However, if you choose to update and close the request, the request will be removed from the My Queue area and it will be marked as closed. Now, when you do this, the request isn't necessarily closed for good. If a customer replies back to you after you close a request, the request will reopen and will reappear in the My Queue area automatically. A very common workflow is to update and close requests as soon as you're waiting for feedback from a customer. Then when that customer replies to you, the request will reopen and you can begin working on the request again. This can keep the My Queue area more clean and help you focus on the requests that need your immediate attention. That brings us then down to the request history. Now the request history shows us all of the actions and notes that have been made on this request. We can see notes that have been marked as public and also private notes here. In addition, we're able to see other changes that have been made to the request. For example, this request has been reassigned and also the category has been changed on this request. 